All right, we're on the job site with John from New England Remodeling. John, what do you got for us today? Today is the drywall panel hoist from Harbor Freight Tools, item 69377. I'm going to take a quick look at what comes in the box, go over a couple of the specifications and the dimensions, put this thing together, and uh, see it in action, how it works, and give you my overall opinion on it. First, quickie little... Uh, side note, it's been a while since the last video, probably about a month or so. Things have been crazy with work. I do, however, want to get back into it, start making some real cool videos. I've got a ton of tools to go over, uh, a couple things I think you guys will really enjoy. So hit that subscribe button, don't miss anything, and we'll uh, start pumping these things out. For today, let's get in here, look over a couple of the features of the, of the unit. Um, automatic load holding brake for safety. That's going to be... If for some reason this, this cable pulley system goes out while that thing's up, it's only got so far it'll drop before an automatic pin drops into a hole and stops this thing from crashing down on the ground. Sturdy welded steel construction, holds up to 150 pounds, uh, plenty and plenty of weight for even probably, I would imagine, some 5 eighths, you know, 16 footers and stuff. Um, cradle lit tilts easily for loading. Um, this whole unit here is going to tilt down. We'll show that later in the video. You set your set your sheet on it and flatten it back out. You can also peg it into different angles uh, for vaulted ceilings and whatnot. This here, I don't really agree with this. Extendable tripod base for stability. These don't necessarily extend. They don't get any bigger or smaller depending on your load. I would call that collapsible tripod base for stability. The, all three of these fold up tight for storage. Um, smooth rolling, non-marring rubber casters that lock in place. Take a look at those too. I'm excited to see if those are like the hard, hard plastic or if they really are a nice soft rubber. A couple of dimensions of the unit. 60, 60 inch length, 51 and 3 quarter inch width, 85 uh, inch height, or 58, I'm reading this upside down. <laughs> 58 inch height. 106 inch with the outriggers fully extended. So again, plenty of support. That's uh, what, just shy of 10 feet, 11, or uh, 9 feet or so. Plenty of support for a 16 footer, you know, things like that. Slide the cover off real quick and we'll kind of see what's in the box. And then uh, in just a second, we'll put this, put this thing together and, and see it in action. Take a few of these out so you guys can see how it comes packaged up. It's pretty well packaged up. Uh, doesn't seem to be any damage in there from shipping and stuff. Um, so, all in all, pretty good. Let me uh, take a pause. I'm going to start putting this thing together. Probably take a couple of clips in the meantime as I assemble each piece. I think it's pretty stitch, pretty straightforward. We'll see the, you know, each step of the way. I'll take a quick clip and then see this thing in action. Okay, we got this thing pulled out of the box. Uh, Pretty, it's pretty pre-assembled actually. The pieces break down fairly easily. Um, this is what you're looking at. Everything. This is the whole, everything that was in the box. Um, you got the tripod unit, you got the central mast, and the work support, uh, and also that little handle. That's the only thing you really have to assemble. Um, fairly straightforward how this thing goes together. So I guess we'll just show, show the whole process. First thing you're gonna do, uh, let me lay this down, is is actually deal with this. There's a little, there's a little uh, like metal D right here. You're gonna push that, and that's how this folds up. See how these those collapse into that position, and they lock. Take this metal ring right here, push it, and that's how they open up. It should re-click. There we go. Into position right there. Um, if you want to come in close and look right here, see you got this inner piece of metal V welded in there. That's what registers into the bottom of this unit and holds also this top edge of this V uh, registers into this groove right here. There's a secondary piece welded on. So that lower small V locks into place down here and the upper end of this bracket right here is what goes in to this piece holding everything together. So this, you just got to make sure those are all lined up. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, next, 
The only piece you really have to assemble is the handle. So just grab it, you know, grab an adjustable or something. Thread this guy in here. That's all that does. It just gives you a place to hold while you're cranking it up and down. Next, top piece. Uh, all you got is just a steel pin that drops in this hole up on top. That's that. Lastly, the two supports. Um, the way these go in, if you can come in a little closer maybe, and shoot up top and look at this plate. It's got like a wedge shaped piece there and that corresponds to this piece. Uh, and this is actually the lock. You'll hear it snap when it goes when it goes through. Hear that snap? You can see up underneath, if you can see there, to get it out you just have to pinch that. Pin it just locks in place now. To get it out you pinch and you can pull it back. So that's how those go in place. Um, the outriggers. You've got a spring-loaded pin right here. You pull that pin and these extend out. I would recommend pulling the pin and letting it go. That way as you bring it out, it'll keep locking in a position. This thing will come all the way out. I think you've got three holes. The last one tells you because it's only about four inches. After that, the whole piece is going to fall out on you. So just know four detents, one of them fully closed, and three extended positions on both sides. These are your support pieces. As you tilt it down, like I mentioned before, that's what the drywall rests on. Just a cotter pin that runs through the back. Got this handle, the whole unit drops, you load your sheetrock so it's supported by these, and then you tip it flat, and then Probably don't even have to, but just for safety's sake, throw the pin back through and crank this thing up. That's about it for features. Um, well, right here, if we look in the back actually, the unit cranks up. Uh, here's your brake right here. This is just a cable brake. This is the secondary brake. You just crank this puppy up like this, and you'll hear every time that thing hits you know a hole that's another that's another safety position um, it will it'll drop into those holes right there so when you're up the cable brake should hold it this is a secondary if this thing was to let go it'll only drop from here where it is to this hole it can only travel a maximum of about six or eight inches if this thing was to give away this brake here to let it down uh, crank up a little bit, lift up on the brake, and now you can start to come down. What you do have to do, watch, watch what will happen. That thing will drop in. So actually what you do have to do is pull this out and to the side and it clicks over. Now you can let the whole thing down. All the way. Like that. This is a neat feature. This fork right here, as you come down, all the way down, watch what happens. That resets the safety mechanism. So no matter what, because you have to pull the safety out in order to lower the unit, to load a new sheet or whatever. So no matter what, every time, every time you're up, pull this over, come back down to load a new sheet. It's gonna automatically reset your safety so the next time you go up, you don't have to think about it. Pretty neat little feature. That's about it for an overview. Um, these do fold up, I guess, lastly, not much here. Little wing nuts. They're cranked on pretty good. That's self-explanatory. Knock the wing nut loose, and this will fold backwards for storage. Make it a little smaller. Let me get a piece up on here, and we'll see, see how it works with a real sheet. All right, we got a piece thrown up on the lift. Um, the outriggers right now, these guys are in their first extended position. Um, this is a 12-footer, I believe. So you can see it, uh, it, holds it, it holds it pretty nicely. Um, I do have this pin in the, in the first position, just so it didn't go anywhere. You can kind of relieve a little pressure off it, pull it out, 
and drop it down flat. Like I said, that's not going to go anywhere. If you're really worried about it, take that pin again and just throw it back through that zero position. Uh, now you can jump under here and just start cranking her up, man. These are, this is obviously not in final position. It's not even oriented the right way in the ceiling. But these are nine and a half foot ceilings. You can see it would be a pain for me to have to do this. You know, I can bring this right up, snug it up tight, lock this brake. You know, if I needed to, come back down a little bit, drop it down. I can lock it, maybe just position this a little bit, turn this, wheel it around, get it right into position where I need it, and then take it, crank it up, crank a little bit of pressure onto the ceiling. More than enough. I mean, where else can one guy get a sheet tied up to a ceiling from the ground? Nine and a half foot ceilings, 12 foot sheet. I mean, it's a, it's a nice thing. This lift, uh, like I said, Harbor Freight, um, it's usually 300 bucks. A lot of times they've got them on sale for 200. You can always find a 20% off coupon. So I paid 160 bucks plus tax for this. I mean, if you're going to use it a couple of times, you've got some ceilings to do. I think it's a no-brainer. Save your neck, save your back, um, save a sheet or two of sheetrock. You know, not cracking them. I did notice this feature right between the last two takes. This this whole unit, when it's collapsed and broken down, it has a, a tendency if you're carrying it for these masts, they can just shoot right out the top. This doesn't hold at all. So I think what what you do is snap this up and into place. And that locks everything so that as you're carrying this upper unit, nothing goes flying out. Other thing to notice, simple thing, but this thing's got gobs of grease all over it on that safety mechanism, on the head unit up there. My want to just take and wipe it down quick. The wheels that we talked about earlier, they're not bad. <coughs> they're a little they're a little hard. They're more of a hard plastic than a rubber, I would say, like the case said. They do seem to be decent casters. They do all lock. Uh, but if you were working on finished floors, well, one, you should cover them with something anyway. Uh, but I would say even like just a rosin paper or something wouldn't be enough. They do have a little ridge down the middle of them. Now either file, you know, sand those off so they're smoother or make sure you've got a hardboard or a ram board, something like that, protecting the floor if you're on a finished surface. If not, it's probably fine. Um, Maybe one last feature while I'm down here is this little foot. This is going to be if you're installing a sheet on a wall. Installing a sheet on a wall is the same, same process. Everything's the same. All you do is you load the sheet on into that tipped position, bring it up close to a wall, set this brake. Um, the sheet right now would be on this side of the lift, facing the wall that way. You bring it up, you push it up close, you set this brake. This stops the lift from rolling backwards. And then all you do is you just push the top of it. Top tips into the wall, crank it up, you know, make sure everything's tight, and start fastening. Real simple. Set your top sheets, set your ceilings. Overall, great unit. I think plenty sturdy for whatever you're going to need it for. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, lots of cool videos in the works. Um, some real neat tools, some, some new tools I've gotten. Um, so stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed.